So let's look at interpreting cladograms. The syllabus objective is that you need to be able to interpret cladograms to infer the evolutionary relatedness between groups of organisms. So let's look at what a cladogram is. A cladogram is a branching diagram that represents the hypothesized evolutionary relationship between species. So a couple of things on a cladogram, you see that there, there's several ways that, that they can be drawn. This is one of the representations. You see that all of these lines are of the same length, generally. And you see you have these branches that come off this main line. The other thing you can see is that time is represented vertically. So uh, from an evolutionary point of view, as you go up the diagram, things are more recent from an evolutionary point of view. So these notches here are our shared derived characteristics. So they're, they're, they're shared by all of the organisms that come after it. So there's a few characteristics we see on a cladogram. First of all, we have this thing called an outgroup. And the outgroup is, um, I guess, species that don't have any of these shared characteristics. These notches here with the characteristic written below, they're called shared derived characteristics. Uh, and, and they're shared because every species that comes after this share that characteristic. It's derived because it's, it's developed, it's evolved over time. So these are shared derived characteristics and cladograms uh, represent or organize species based on these shared derived characteristics. Each one of these uh, branches is called a node and this is essentially a speciation event where new characteristics are developed. So that's a cladogram. Now there's also something called a phylogenic tree which is similar but not exactly the same. So let's compare the two. A cladogram, whilst it sort of demonstrates uh, this change over time, there's actually no time scale for it. Whereas with a phylogenic tree, there is a time scale. It will generally tell you how many millions of years. And can you see that these different, uh, the lines are of different lengths and they stop at different points. So this indicates that, for example, that the Canada here uh, is predates or is older than some of these other uh, species or families because they um, their their lines started later and and, uh, and are longer. Okay, so you can see a time scale in a phylogenetic tree. Now the other thing with a cladogram, it looks at these shared derived characteristics which are morphological. They're you know they're they're physical similarities primarily. Whereas the phylogenetic tree focuses on genetic and evolutionary relationships. So it's more specific because it actually looks at those similarities in the genetics. So this syllabus objective is about interpreting these diagrams. So let's have a look at some practice. Question one, sequence the shared derived characteristics from the earliest to the most recent. So stop the video, have a think about doing that yourself, then we'll do it together. So the cognitive verb here is to sequence, and that means to put in order. Uh, the shared derived characteristics from the earliest to the most recent. Okay, so if time is going this way, the earliest is the jaws. So it's quite simply going to be jaws, lungs, claw slash nails, fur, and the prehensile thumbs. Why haven't we got feathers? Well, that's not shared. Can you see how feathers is off here? Because the... The birds have feathers, but the species that come after that don't have feathers. So that's why we have this derived characteristic uh, on the um, on this branch. Okay, so that's that's the order. Next question: Infer whether the walrus or the red panda would have the DNA more similar to the weasel. Provide a reason for the response. Okay, I'll give you a Pause the video so you can have a look at doing that yourself. All right, so you've got to determine which one, the red panda or the walrus, would have the DNA more similar to the weasel. So let's find these organisms. So we've got our weasel here, we've got our red panda, 
and we've got the walrus. Okay, now we have to determine which one is going to be uh, have the DNA that's more similar. So, the way we do this is, uh, well, the answer would be the red panda. And the reason for it is because it has, uh, they share a more recent common ancestor. So this is the common ancestor that's shared by both the weasel and the panda. This is the common ancestor shared by the weasel and the panda. Now, if we have a look at the weasel and the walrus, we actually have to come down to here as the most recent common ancestor. So that is further back in time. So the answer to this question is that the red panda and the weasel, or the red panda, has DNA more similar to the weasel. And the reason for it, provide the reason, is because they share a more recent common ancestor.